Morning Year 10, uh, this morning's lesson, Starter Activity. I'll read through the Starter Activity for you so that you can then have an opportunity to write the questions down, pause the presentation, do your solutions, and then you can come back into the presentation and I'll be going through the answers on the board. So the first set of questions, calculate. 27 divided by 3, subtract 4 squared. 8, subtract, and then you've got a bracket. 2, subtract 6, and the bracket has all been squared. Those questions, what are they going to be about? Order of operations. Factorise, 25x, subtract 50y. Factorise, x squared, take away, subtract 5x, subtract 50. Evaluate, 10 cubed, 10 cubed. Next one, it's a cube root, and inside the cube root is 11 plus 4 squared. Solve, so it's an equation, we're trying to find the value for x. 7x plus 12 equals 47. Second one, solve, 7x plus 12 equals x plus 21. Finding the value for x. And the last one, find the area of this shape, which is a semicircle, if pi is given a value of 3, and this length here is 12 centimetres. So that's your questions for your starter activity. You write those questions down, work out your solutions, pause the video, or have you pause the video, and then you can turn the video back on and I'll go through the solutions. Okay, year 10, the solutions. Big maths questions, order of operations. What's got to come first? We've got an indices here. No bracket, we've got an indices though. So we've got 4 squared, which is 16. We've got a division, 27 divided by 3. So we've got a value of 9. Now we've got a subtraction, 9 to subtract 16 gives us a solution of 7. Big mass, we've got a bracket. <coughs> 2 subtract 6 gives us a value of minus 4 for the bracket. <coughs> but that minus 4 has then got to be squared indices coming after the bracket. Minus 4 squared is actually positive 16. Minus 4 multiplied by minus 4 gives us a positive result, so it's positive 16. Don't forget, in front of that bracket we had a negative sign. So our subtraction that we're going to do is 8 subtract 16, which gives us a solution of minus 8. Factorise. What is common to both of those terms? We've got a common factor in the numbers of 25. And inside our bracket, we're going to have an x, 25 times x will give us 25x. 25 is a factor of 50. We need a 2. 2 times 25 will take us back to the value of 50. Factorising this quadratic expression, two brackets. An x at the front of each brackets, each of the brackets. <clears throat> two numbers that multiply to make a negative 50, but add together to make a negative 5. One of them is going to have to be a negative number, because we've got a negative result when we multiply them together. When we add them together, we've got a negative result, so the greater in magnitude is going to be the negative number. So the two numbers I'm going to use are minus 10 and a plus 5. 5 multiplied by minus 10 gives us minus 50. Minus 10 plus the 5 would give us minus 5. Evaluate. 10 cubed. 10 times 10 times 10. Good number to keep in your head. 1,000. 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 100 is 1,000. The cubed root of 11 plus 4 squared. Well, what's 4 squared? It's 16. 16 plus 11 gives us the cubed root of 27. 
What's the cube root of 27? What number multiplied by itself three times would give us 27? The solution is three. Three times three is nine. Three times nine is 27. Solve. It's an equation. As long as we do the same thing to the left hand side as the right hand side, we're not changing the value of the equation, we're just balancing each side. Take away 12 from each side. So now we've got 7x equals 35. We divide both sides by 7, we get the x on its own. We've got x equals 5. A little bit more work to do here. Subtract x from both sides. Take away x from both sides means we've got 6x plus 12 equals 21. Subtract 12 from both sides. Means we've got 6x equals 9. Now if we divide both sides by 6, to get the x on its own, we've got a value of x equals 1.5 or 1.5. And, and I said it's got to be a whole number value, so 1.5, legitimate answer. Finding the area of pi equals 3. The area of a whole circle would be pi r squared. But this isn't a whole circle, it's a half circle. So for this example, it would be divided by 2. The area that we're seeking would be pi r squared divided by 2, because it's half a circle. What's the value of r though? That 12 isn't the radius of the circle. The radius is going to be half of that 12. It's going to be 6, and 6 is the radius. So, if we substitute the values we've got, I've told you to take the value of pi of 3. The value of r is going to be 6, so r squared is going to be 36. Divide that by 2. And that gives us a value of, let's do a little bit of counting to make life easier for ourselves. 2 goes into 36 18 times. 3 lots of 18 gives us a value of 54 centimetres squared. And that's our value. That's the starter activity completed. We'll now move across to the other board. And today what we're going to be looking at is a little bit of revision really. It's the uh, topic of volume, um, but to do with regular shapes. So we're talking about volume, and it's to do with regular shapes. And you'll see what I mean when we work through. Just to start with though, revision of areas. We've got a square, we've got a rectangle, we've got a triangle. What are the areas of those shapes? And you need to know this to be able to continue the rest of the lesson. You should know these uh, formulae for each of these areas. The area of the square is base times height. The area of a rectangle, base times height. The area of a triangle, half times base times height. The base times height and then half that value gives us the area of the triangle. There's a reminder of the formulae that you do need to know. You need to know that. Base times height for a square, base times height for a rectangle, and half the base times height for a triangle. A few more examples. A circle, parallelogram, parallelogram, so it's got two sets of parallel sides. These sides are parallel. And these sides are parallel. Okay? They're parallel sides. That's parallelogram. Trapezium. 
So it's got one set of parallel sides. It's only got one set of parallel sides this time. What are their areas? Well, we've been doing some work on circles, so I'm really hopeful that you know what the area of the circle is, the formula for that. The area of the parallelogram and the trapezium, we may need to remind you about that. The area of the circle, pi r squared. The area of the parallelogram. It's the base. Oh. Value of the base, it's the length of the base, times the vertical height. So that's this vertical height. It is not sloping height. It is not that value. It is the vertical height that you're interested in. Trapezium. Now it looks quite a complicated formula, but hopefully you've seen this before. It's a half multiplied by a must be inside a bracket multiplied by h. Well, h is quite easy to explain. And h is the vertical height again. So it's this the vertical height for a trapezium. That's what we're interested in. The a and the b are the lengths of these parallel sides. So these two sides are parallel. You need to add those sides together. That's your a and your b times it by half, divide by two, and multiply it by the vertical height, and it's the vertical height. Again, not the sloping height, but the vertical height. Okay, now you need to be familiar with those, so you might want to make a note of all of those uh, formulae for areas, because what we're going on to do is talk about uh, what I introduced earlier on, it's going to be to do with volumes. And we're talking about finding the volumes of what we'll call a prism. Again, it should be something that's familiar to you. You should have seen this before, so this should be revision. And the prism is a 3D shape, so something in three dimensions, but it's the same cross section running all the way through it. And that's that's a definition, but let's just explain that, uh, explain what we mean by that. So examples of prism. Cuboid. Yeah, it's got a rectangle at the end. It's got straight edges that form the rest of the shape. But it's a regular shape all the way through. It doesn't change in dimensions. A triangular prism. Triangle at the end, but then it's a regular shape. It's got the same cross section. If you cut it anywhere down its length, it would have the same cross section. Just another example of a different type of triangular prism. It's just got a triangle at the end. Now, ladies and gents, all you need to be able to do to calculate the volume of any of these shapes is work out the area at the end and multiply it by the length of the shape. So, we've just revised, we've just gone through working out the area, we've revised those formulae. And you can look back at those if you need to. Find the area at the end, and multiply it by the length, and that will give you the volume of that cuboid. The triangle, triangular prism here, find the area at the end, multiply it by the length, and that will give you the volume of that shape. Again, find the area at the end, multiply it by the length, that will give you the volume. We can do this for any regular shape that's got the same cross section uh, as you go through the shape. So, cube or a square prism, a rectangular prism, which we've talked about, a cuboid, cylinder or circular prism. So it's got a circle at the end, but we just find the area of the circle at the end, multiply it by the length. That's all you have to do. Triangular prism we've spoken about. Just another form of a rectangular prism. Find an area, multiply it by the length. Pentagonal prism. 
we know the area at the end, multiply it by the length. And that will give us our volume. So any regular shape, it's got the same cross section throughout its length, we can just use that formula. The volume of the prism is the area of the cross section multiplied by the length. So an example, got a rectangular prism there, cuboid, that was two centimetres, that's three centimetres, and that's five centimetres. The area of the rectangle at the end is going to be 2 times 3, so that gives us 6 centimetres squared. Multiply it by the length, 6 times 5 gives us 30 centimetres cubed for the whole shape. Don't forget it's cubed. Area, centimetres squared. Volume, centimetres cubed. Another example, got a triangle, make it simple, keep it a right angle triangle, so we could have uh, 4 centimetres by 3 centimetres, and we'll make that 5 centimetres again, what's the area? the triangle at the end, 3 times 4 which is 12 but half of that, so again it's going to be 6 centimetres squared for the area, so the volume is just going to be that area multiplied by the length, so it's going to be 6 times 5, 30 centimetres cubed again. Finally, just have a quick look. All right, let's go back. Let's have a quick look at one final example. Cylindrical, a cylinder, so a circular prism. Now, let's make that four centimeters across there. We we'll take the value of pi. We did value a pi of 3 to keep the calculation nice and simple. That length will make 5 centimetres again. What's the area at the end? The area at the end is pi r squared. So pi r given a value of 3. The diameter all the way across is 4, so the radius is half of that, so it's 2 squared. 2 times 2 is 4, so the area at the end is 12 centimetres squared, which means that my volume is that 12 centimetres squared multiplied by 5. So 12 times 5. times 5 is going to give me 16 centimetres cubed as the volume of that cylinder. Now one final thing I'll talk about, this is an example of a prism. Is it a shape that if you cut it anywhere along its length it would have the same cross section, this cross section here? The answer is yes. Is that something we could then deal with? Could we find the area at the end here if we were given the relevant dimensions? You're given enough information about the dimensions of this L shape at the end, yet you could find the area of this L shape. And just as a reminder, it's a compound shape. We could cut it into rectangles, work out the area of the rectangles at the end, 
find the area of this whole L shape at the end, multiply it by the length. We just need to find this area, and that is something that we should be able to do. Once we've found that area, multiply it by the length, and that will give us the volume of that shape. And that's the end of today's presentation. There will be a short exercise on SAM learning for you to have a look at, and there will be some worksheets for you to have a go at with solutions available. So please make use of your time. Make use of that time that's available to you. Um, it's important that you keep progressing with this work. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope this is useful to you.